Hello, my name is Chris Hammond. I'm the director of training here with .NET New Corporation. In this brief video, I'm going to show you how to use Microsoft's new Razor syntax to create a Razor script within .NET Nuke that will allow you to place Facebook comments on your page. We're going to utilize this script actually to limit the way the comments work. We're going to be creating a script that works with this module called DNN Simple Article, which we've gone through and demoed in a few previous videos. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to place the Razor host module onto a page. Then we're going to go in and create a new script within that host module. We're going to customize that script so that it will provide the Facebook comments. And you can see how to do all of this by going to the blog listed here on the screen using that shortcut URL. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to a Windows 7 machine. It's currently running .NET Nuke 5.6.1. And we have the DNN simple article module being displayed on a page. Now what we want to actually do with this module is we only want to allow users to add comments when they're viewing an article as opposed to when they're viewing the article list. So we're going to do that through the use of a Razor script. Now in order to use Razor we need to go ahead and place the Razor host module on a page. Now in previous videos we've shown you how to install the Razor host module. We're going to go ahead and choose that from the drop down list in the control panel. And I'll go ahead and give it a title of Facebook comments. We'll simply click add module. That's going to place the Razor host module on the page. Now you can only work with the Razor host module as a host or a super user account within .NET Nuke. The reason for that is you're actually executing code and you can perform a number of different actions that you typically don't want administrators to be able to do within a module on a .NET Nuke website. So out of the box when we place the module on the page, we get the module displayed here. Now we can go in and edit the module or edit the script. But for now, the first thing we're going to do is go into the settings for our module because we want to actually control the way this particular module displays on the page. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go into the page settings. And inside of the page settings, I'm going to turn off the container. That's because we don't want to actually show that title, Facebook comments. So I'm going to uncheck display container and then go ahead and click on update. Now that will turn off the container that wraps around our module when we are in view mode or when we're viewing the site without edit permissions. As you can see right now, I can still see that container. I can still see the title. That's because we're logged in and we are in edit mode. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go in and edit the Razor script now. And it's already utilizing a default Razor script, but if we go into the actions menu for our module and choose edit script, on the edit script screen, we can go ahead and create an additional script. So I'm going to choose the add new script option. And this will allow us to then type in the name of our script. And I'm going to call this one Facebook comments. And I'm going to choose to write it in C sharp. So I'll go ahead and click on update. And that's going to create our new script. Now before we can actually utilize that script, we need to choose it from the drop down lists of available scripts. We can see there's a Facebook comments.cshtml file now. If I choose that, it's going to reload the text box below. What we'll see in the script is it just has a simple H2 tag. Now what we're actually going to do is we're going to go ahead and paste some code in from that blog post that I previously referenced. Now that code is just some simple Razor script and if I paste it in here, we'll go ahead and tell you what's going on here. So the first thing we have is we're opening up our script block. And then within that, we're going to go out and check for an object. We check to see if there's a query string parameter called AID. Now the DNN simple article module uses a query string parameter AID to reference a specific article. So this is where we want to show the script only when an article is being passed in the URL, when we're loading a specific article. So we're checking to see if that query string parameter exists. If it does exist, then we get into this if statement here. So we're basically saying if it is not null, then we go in and we set a variable here called current path. And that current path is being populated with the URL of the current request, the URL of the page that the visitor is on. Then we have a div tag here for some of our, our script for Facebook. And then we have a JavaScript reference calling in a very specific URL for, for Facebook. Now I have a, an app ID defined here that's specific to an app that I've previously created on Facebook. You would want to change that with your appropriate app. 
And then we have our comment section. So the comment section takes in an, an argument or a parameter here called href. And we're passing in the current path argument or variable from up above. That basically is telling Facebook, load the comments for this URL. Don't load the comments for our website or a specific domain name. We're saying load the comments for, in our case, this particular article. And we've set the number of posts at five and the width at 600. So this is creating our script, which if we then go ahead and choose is active, and then save script or save script and return, that will actually take us back to the simple article page. Now, as of right now, if we go ahead and view the page, we really don't see any changes. And if we, we'll go ahead and switch from edit to view mode at the top. And what we should see is that the container around the Facebook comments module goes away and we no longer see anything down beneath the two articles that are being listed off here. So if we click on one of those articles, you'll notice that the URL changes from simple article.aspx to now passing in an AID query string parameter. This, in this case, we're passing in article ID number two. So we can see that the simple article module is now displaying the full article. And if we scroll down to the bottom of the page, after the article, we're going to see the Facebook comments section. Now, I'm currently running on a local URL using WebMatrix at localhost port 1833. So Facebook can't actually access this page. And it's giving us a warning here that's telling us it's unreachable. So other users aren't going to be able to see it. But if I were logged into Facebook now, I could add a comment. And as a user, it would then prompt me to plug that comment in on my profile or my stream back on Facebook. And that would allow my friends to see that I've commented on this particular article. And if this URL was accessible, they would be able to click on that URL and see the article. So as a .NET Nuke site administrator, you can now implement Facebook comments so that people can interact with their Facebook stream and post information easily to and from your websites. So that quickly shows you how you can go through and implement a very basic Facebook comment script using Razor within your .NET Nuke websites. And it's tailored in our case very specifically for the DNN simple article. If you found this video useful, I'd encourage you to check out our .NET Nuke training page. You can find it at the shortcut URL listed here. From there, you'll find a variety of free videos as well as information about our instructor-led training and our custom online and on-site training offerings. Again, this is Chris Hammond with .NET Nuke Corporation. Thanks for watching the video.